Hi, welcome to Aussie Target. In this video, I'm going to run through four quick tips for getting your maps and your waypoints and everything set up really quickly. We're going to cover the display of waypoints, setting your default waypoint style, uh, drawing PZs, and finally setting your map up to load all these things automatically for you. So let's get started. First of all, we'll load a uh, oh, recent maps. Uh, we'll go and load a competition map. Now this map that's loaded up is uh, for Northern in Western Australia. It's being used at our Australian nationals. The intersections are already marked physically on the map. So when I load a waypoint file and uh, load the goal list that they send us, you can see that it loads the PZs, uh, sorry, the waypoints, and they've all got their uh, their number and everything displaying on them. So now we've got two lots of numbers displaying all over our map, which is a bit confusing and unnecessary. So this is tip number one: changing your waypoint display. If we go to the Show Waypoint List tool, we can select all of our waypoints, and we can change the display format on all of them to symbol only. Now this is just the way I do it. You can play with this and find what works best for you, but I go to symbol only. Now the symbol that's set on all of these is a little aeroplane and if we zoom in on one of these you'll see we've now got this little aeroplane symbol on top of the uh, the goal. So we've got the number that's printed on the map and the little aeroplane symbol. Aeroplane symbols a bit rubbish so uh, we've selected all, change our symbol. Again, this is personally what I use, but I find that the green navade works really well. And if I zoom out, you can see that I've now got nice little green dots in the center of all my intersections, which is the actual waypoint that I can use for navigation and everything. And I've got the number that was printed on the map. Uh, if you're not happy with the size of those, you can change your symbol size on all of them. And uh, we can dial that up to say 30. Close that. And now we've got nice big green dots all over our map. So you can customize that, use whatever symbol you like. Uh, but this is the way that I do it on maps that have got the numbers printed on them. Once you're happy with those, we'll go save waypoints to file and we'll call that B. Yep. Okay, so that's tip number one, changing the display. Now when I make a new waypoint and, uh, and say we're putting in a goal in here, now that comes up in the old style or the original default style for Aussie Explorer which the font's a bit small and if you've already got yellow marks all over your map and you're setting up uh, hesitation waltz goals or judge declare goals or something like that you want them to stand out. It's nice to have manually created track uh, waypoints rather turn up looking different. So if we click on that and we say properties, we can go in and we can change our font size. Uh, we can change our symbol size for the default symbol size. Pick our symbol size that we want, uh, symbol style that we want rather. Um, so make that red for manually created ones and display format name with dot and then over here we've got this little red button which is make current settings default for all new waypoints click on that say OK and save and likewise so I meant to go in there as well and change that color let's change that to lime green set that default save so now whenever I make a new waypoint it's going to turn up looking like that, which obviously saves a lot of time. Now if I go to uh, Aussie Target and bring up my waypoint tool and I say a new waypoint and let's call it a fly on goal and we're just going to pick it from the map to save time here, but if I say pick from map and we'll put it in there, it's now made it in that default setting. So good little tip just saves you a lot of time it means you don't have to go in change each one you can pick something that works for the map that you're working on and just have them all come up that way 
And that way, if you do want to go in and, and work on things, the only thing you might want to change is your color, but everything else is nice and consistent. Okay, so that's that. We'll get rid of that tool. Okay, let's draw some PZs. The uh, scoring area tool in uh, in Aussie Target is reasonably good for drawing all these sort of things, but I actually find, and, and one of the reasons I haven't done much improvement on this, is that the tools in Aussie Explorer are already really good. You just need to learn to use them. So the little button up here, just above here, is your track control window. Now, in the later versions of Aussie Explorer, you can draw them on any track you want. So we'll start off on track one anyhow. To manually create track points, select the track tool. And let's say this property boundary here is now a PZ. We can draw the points as we want, turn that off, open it up, let's give it a name, PZ1, change the type to polygon, change the color to red, and change the fill to whatever we want. So, uh, so you really can customize that in any way that you want. When you've got the PZ looking the way you want, change the boundary size, whatever. Uh, we save that PZ, and we'll call that PZ1. And we can close that. Okay, so we'll draw a second PZ. So we select track two, manually create track points. Just really roughly draw that box in there. Go to the properties. Again, we can change the color. We'll pick a yellow uh, polygon. Same sort of yellow for the fill. Let's go for the diagonal cross. Call this one PZ2. Save that as PZ2. Yep. And close. And that is how you can go around, turn that tool off. That's how you can go around and create your waypoints really quickly. Now there's other tools in here for selecting and dragging waypoints and everything else, uh, plot points rather. To be honest, unless it's a really complicated uh, PZ, I've found it's easier just to do each one on its own layer. If you muck it up, clear it, draw it again. And uh, you can, if they're all the same color, merge them all. But again, I find it's easy to keep them as separate files. Because if during the competition a PZ becomes inactive and you want to remove it from your map, you haven't got this giant merged set of PZs. So, so I keep each one separate. And you can also enter you know, information in the description for, for altitude or do not land or whatever else uh, if you need it. So, on to tip number four, putting all this stuff on your map. Now, as you would know, the problem here is that if I've just opened up Aussie Explorer and I clear all of these, and I say, um, no, I don't want to save any of my changes, and I go back to a blank map. The problem now is that when I load my map, none of my PZs or anything have loaded. If I want to load them, I either need to load them manually like so. Uh, I could set up a project, uh, which I might do in a different video, but I tend not to use them. And I'll explain well, when you see this next tip, you'll probably understand why I don't bother. Um, but you can get all these things to load automatically with your map. So tip four is setting up your map to automatically load things. If we go File, Check Calibration on Map, we come up with this page and you've got your options for Show Map Options. Under Options, we can select files to automatically load with the map. So we select the file, we say Open, and we say Add. We select PZ number two, Open, Add and I select my goal list, open, add. Close that, save it. Now I could save it over the top or I could just save it as a new map, save as final, save, replace. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's automatically put 
those plot files up on the screen for me. It hasn't automatically loaded the waypoints at this point, but if I go load recent maps and select final, that will reload and now my PZs are loaded. Uh, sorry, my waypoints, got PZs on the mine. My waypoints are now loaded automatically as well. So the waypoints are now in the in the waypoint list, but the PZs are not in the track file list. And this is the nice thing about doing it this way is that PZ plot files that you don't want to mess with, you just want to have automatically load on your map, are now there, but they're hidden. You can't mess with them and everything else. If I wanted to delete a, way, uh, a PZ, I need to actually go back into File, Check Calibration of Map, wait for it, Options, select the PZ that I want to move, and then remove it, close, resave my map, and that PZ file has now gone from the map and I don't have them in here cluttering up my track files and getting in the way of, of things. So that is tip number four. Add as many of those files as you want to the, uh, to the map so that they automatically load. Another, uh, I suppose, a little side note on that with PZs. I tend to use map comments and uh, and if I put a comment on that PZ there and I'll change the properties and I'll change it to red and the foreground color to white I change my font size up to something that I might be able to read um, and call it 2000 feet for example not happy with the size of it. Once I'm happy with everything, I can change that to the default. So every time I make one of those now, it will be the default. Save. And then, likewise, I can save the uh, uh, comments. No, sorry, comments get automatically saved to the map. So again, if I save my map file to final, then when I load this map from a blank map, clear all of the above. Um, yep. Load recent maps final. I've now got all that information on the map already, ready to go. Got my PZ got the comment telling me the altitude and I've got my waypoints ready to go flying. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that's helpful. If there's anything else people want to know about, let me know because uh, we've got a lot more of these to come. Bye.